While the Triassic period was filled with a menagerie of strange creatures, among the strangest were the Rhynchosaurs. Part of Archosaur Morpha, making them distant relations of dinosaurs and crocodilians, the Rhynchosaurs were small to medium-sized herbivores with hooked, beak-like snouts. One of the most prolific Rhynchosaurs was Hyperodapodon. Not only is Hyperodapodon important in understanding its own time, the Carnian stage, but its extinction was critical in the rise of the dinosaurs. Hyperodapodon was named in 1859 by the famous naturalist Thomas Henry Huxley. Like the names of most prehistoric animals people are familiar with, Hyperodapodon is not a single species, but a genus. While many genera only contain a single species, the species contained in Hyperodapodon are numerous. The basic features of these species were fairly similar. Hyperodapodon's pig-like body was barrel-shaped, likely to hold a large gut to digest plant matter. It was one of the larger rhynchosaurs, ranging from 1.3 meters to 2 meters long, depending on the species. While short, it would have been easy for Hyperodapodon to hide under foliage to avoid detection from predators. While the limbs of more derived Archosauromorphs were held directly beneath their bodies, the limbs of Hyperodapodon were only semi-erect. Examination of their bone histology has revealed they were ectothermic, or cold-blooded, like other early Archosauromorphs. However, the Rhynchosaurs were closely related to the first endothermic Archosauromorphs, who gave rise to dinosaurs, crocodilians, and many of the contemporary top predators, such as Saurosuchus. While they may not have had fully erect limbs, Hyperodapodon's hind limbs were powerfully built with large claws. While too blunt to be effective weapons, they are thought to have been used for digging. While Hyperodapodon's body was unassuming, its wide, short skull made up for it. Its shape was triangular, starting extremely wide and then narrowing until it formed the beak-like structure. This structure was formed from the premaxilla, which forms the end of the upper snout in most other animals. Two smaller prongs were present at the end of the lower jaw, with space between them to accommodate the larger premaxilla. It has been reconstructed in a variety of ways, with most earlier reconstructions leaving it exposed in a manner like that of a reptilian naked mole rat. It may also have been covered by lips, much like how the overbite of the modern Tuatara is not apparent in life. Another idea is that it was covered in keratin, making it a true beak. The beak hypothesis is probably the most likely, as examination of the skull of the Rhynchosaur Phaudonyx indicates support for the keratin of such a beak. Either way, Hyperodapodon's odd premaxilla is thought to have been used to shear off tough vegetation or to dig in search of roots like its hind limbs. This was far from its only strange feature. While the lower jaw held one row of teeth, the upper jaw held multiple rows. Unlike most other reptiles, Hyperodapodon's small, numerous teeth were not constantly shed and replaced throughout adulthood. While incapable of chewing its food, Hyperodapodon's jaws fit together precisely to create a powerful shearing action. The strong jaw muscles needed to create this bite were part of the reason it had such a wide head, as the muscles filled the openings on both sides. The primary purpose of such a powerful bite would have been to consume tough vegetation. Given its short height, Hyperodapodon was limited to low-lying plants, with taller plants being the domain of larger herbivores such as Dicynodonts and Psilocycus. Hyperodapodon lived near the beginning of the Late Triassic, specifically during the later half of the Carnian stage, between 231 to 227 million years ago. During this time, Hyperodapodon was extremely widespread. When it was alive, all the world's major landmasses formed a single megacontinent called Pangaea. While most genera were limited to particular regions, fossils of Hyperodapodon are found on every continent besides Australia, and Antarctica. With the limited Triassic fossils from these two continents, Hyperodapodon may have inhabited them as well. Given its large range, Hyperodapodon coexisted with a variety of species. The most dangerous contemporary predators were not dinosaurs, but Pseudosuchians, including Saurosuchus and Ornithosuchus. Though dinosaurs were not yet apex predators, some species, such as Baryolestes, and especially Herrerasaurus were still large enough to be a threat. 
Hyperodapodon was not only widespread, but extremely abundant. In some locations, it made up 70 to 80% of fossil tetrapods excavated, showing it was a very important component of the ecosystem. This makes Hyperodapodon essentially the reptilian equivalent of the synapsid Lystrosaurus, who was extremely abundant across Pangaea during the early Triassic. Hyperodapodon's global abundance within a short time span also makes it a good index fossil for the Carnian stage, much as the Lystrosaurus is an index fossil for the earliest Triassic. While prolific, Hyperodapodon became extinct at a very important time. The Carnian stage saw several other major changes happen in the biosphere, such as the extinction of several other prolific taxa and other groups such as conifers and dinosaurs becoming a lot more common. The extinction of Hyperodapodon and these other events is hypothesized to be connected to a period of climate change called the Carnian Pluvial Event. While not one of the big five, or six, mass extinctions, the Carnian Pluvial Event was the largest extinction event within the Triassic period. This extinction event is thought to have been caused by the release of greenhouse gases from increased volcanism, which resulted in global warming, greater humidity, and acid rain for a period of roughly 2 million years. Notably, Hyperodapodon was prolific during this period. Therefore, like Lystrosaurus, Hyperodapodon's abundance may have been a result of it filling the void from the extinctions connected to the Carnian Pluvial event. This may have helped stabilize the ecosystem, reducing the severity of the extinctions. More precise dating is needed to know whether the end of the Carnian Pluvial event and the return to aerotic conditions resulted in Hyperodapodon's sudden extinction or if it suffered a slower decline. Either way, this was critical in the rise of the dinosaurs. Before Hyperodapodon's extinction, dinosaurs made up less than 5% of the fauna in the regions where they were even present. Afterwards, they became much more common and diverse. While they were previously carnivores and small omnivores, some sauropodomorphs soon became major herbivores in the southern continents, helping to fill the ecological hole Hyperodapodon left behind. These new herbivores, the platyosaurin grade sauropodomorphs, would grow to become some of the largest herbivores in the Triassic period. Additionally, they would later give rise to the famous sauropods in the following Jurassic period. From this foothold, dinosaurs were able to slowly increase their diversity throughout the rest of the Triassic period, though it wouldn't be until the Jurassic period that they were in their more familiar role as the dominant large animals. While Hyperodapodon was not the last of the rhynchosaurs, after the Carnian stage, rhynchosaurs were bit players in a world increasingly dominated by archosaurs, archosauromorphs much more closely related to dinosaurs and crocodilians than the rhynchosaurs. It doesn't seem the rhynchosaurs even made it to the end of the Triassic period. Though just as dinosaurs were more than simply a prelude to mammals, Hyperodapodon was more than just a footnote in the story of the dinosaurs. It was part of a successful lineage of beaked reptiles helped to stabilize global ecosystems during a major catastrophe, and defined an important time in Earth's history. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to everyone who has helped this channel grow to over 1,000 subscribers. Many more videos about prehistory are on the way. As always, have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.